Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Gushin Garland and you're watching First Post. In the next few minutes, I get you the top 40 updates from around the world, only here on Fast and Factual. Let's get started. We begin with the latest in the United States. President Donald Trump has hinted at a very big trade deal with India. The remarks came weeks after India-US closed-door talks concluded. The talks reportedly focused on greater market access for industrial and agricultural products and also on tariff cuts and non-tariff barriers. The talks reportedly also aim at taking India-US trade to $500 billion by 2030. After President Trump announced at the NATO summit that the US will hold nuclear talks with Iran, the country's Foreign Minister Abbas Arachi denied the announcement. He said, and I quote, no plan has been set yet to start negotiations, end quote. Arachi also accused Washington of exaggerating the impact of US strikes on its nuclear sites. Israeli strikes across Gaza have killed at least 71 Palestinians since Thursday. This includes 14 aid workers. As per reports, the Israeli strikes hit a school, shelter, tents and people waiting for humanitarian aid. Israel has also cut the most direct aid route into northern Gaza. Russia announced that it had seized control of two more settlements in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. Moscow also claimed strikes on 152 Ukrainian targets, including drone production sites, ammunition depots, air defense systems, while intercepting over 200 drones. Meanwhile, Ukraine reported successfully halting a major Russian advance in the Sumy region. The Ukrainian military confirmed 79 combat clashes along the front lines. New York City's incumbent mayor Eric Adams has launched his re-election bid as an independent candidate. This is after progressive candidate Zoran Mamdani won in the Democratic primary earlier this week. At an event held on the steps of the New York City Hall, Adams took a dig at Mamdani and said the election is a choice between a candidate with a blue collar and one with a silver spoon. End quote. After the SpaceX Dragon capsule successfully docked with the International Space Station, the crew was welcomed with hugs and smiles from the residents present there. Among the SpaceX crew is also ISRO astronaut Shubhanshu Shukla, who has made history as the first Indian to board the ISS. The crew is set to spend up to 14 days on board conducting science experiments, public outreach and commercial activities. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh urged his Chinese counterpart Dong Jun to work towards a permanent solution to the long-standing border dispute between the two nations. The meeting took place on the sidelines of the SEO Defence Minister's summit. Rajnath Singh emphasised the need for a structured roadmap to resolve tensions peacefully and avoid future confrontations. Japan carried out the first execution since 2022, hanging 34-year-old Takiro Shira Ishii infamously known as the Twitter killer. In 2017, Shira Ishii murdered and dismembered nine people after luring them via social media. The victims were mostly young women who had expressed suicidal thoughts online. He offered to help or even die alongside them before strangling, raping and mutilating his victims. Seoul City officials have asked e-commerce platforms Temu and AliExpress to suspend the sale of 11 children's products. They were found to contain hazardous chemicals well above South Korea's safety limits. Out of 35 products tested, such as raincoats, boots and umbrellas, more than 30% failed to meet safety standards. The city has officially requested both platforms suspend non-complaint listings immediately. Thousands of university teachers, students and staff stage candlelight marches across Argentina. They are demanding increased education funding and salary adjustments. The last protest took place outside the Ministry of Education in Buenos Aires with demonstrators calling for the swift approval of a university financing law. Since President Javier Millet took office in late 2023, education workers have voiced strong opposition to deep budget cuts. On to climate news now. Heavy rain caused severe flooding in parts of New Zealand. A state of emergency was declared in the Tasman district today. 
after heavy rainfall since Thursday night. Aerial footage showed flooded areas near the towns of Havelock in Tasman overnight rain triggered evacuations and rescue calls. Emergency crews helped people trapped in vehicles and pumped water out of flooded homes. Heavy floods hit parts of Venezuela on Thursday. In western Merdia state, intense rains caused landslide and destroyed roads and homes. Five states were badly affected by the flooding. The drone footage showed widespread damage to infrastructure in Meridia. In fact, a highway bridge also collapsed amid the storm. The government provided food and medical aid to over 640 families. Local officials reported no deaths yet. Some farmers in Iraq's southern province left their land due to a severe water crisis. The government banned summer farming and growing rice to cope with shortages. The crisis hit after years of declining water from Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Restrictions from Turkey and Iran made it worse. Farmers said they had no choice but to quit. Officials blame climate change and poor management. Wildfires burned homes in parts of Greece on Thursday. Flames spread near a coastal town south of Athens. High winds made the fire hard to control. People fled as some holiday homes caught fire in the coastal town. Over 130 firefighters and 20 aircraft fought the flames. Findings from a new export report, the UK Parliament say the country cut carbon emissions by over 50% since 1990. According to reports, the drop came mainly from shutting coal plants and using renewables. The report looked at pollution from cars, planes, homes and factories. It said more electric cars and tree planting helped cut pollution, although flying emissions rose and remains a concern. But UK aims to cut emissions by 81% by 2035. On to business and tech news now, Asian share markets hit their highest level in more than three years as they tracked a Wall Street rally. MSCI's broadest index of Asia-Pacific shares outside Japan touched its strongest level since November 2021, earlier today, while Japan's Nikkei jumped 1.5% and surpassed the 40,000 mark for the first time in five months. The US dollar drifted lower earlier today, hovering near its lowest level in three and a half years against the euro and sterling. Traders were betting on deeper US rate cuts amid growing speculation that President Trump could announce a dovish Federal Reserve chair ahead of schedule. With the Israel-Iran ceasefire holding, market focus had shifted sharply to US monetary policy and trade deals deadlines. The U.S. reached a new agreement with China to expedite rare earth shipments amid efforts to end a trade war between the world's biggest economies. This came as President Trump earlier said Washington had signed a deal with Beijing on Wednesday. U.S. officials confirmed that China would resume deliveries of critical minerals, prompting Washington to consider lifting certain countermeasures. Walmart announced it was closing a fulfillment center in Fort Worth, Texas that handled online orders from its Sam's Club chain. The company said it could not yet estimate possible job losses as employees were still deciding on relocation options. Volumes handed at the facility would be relocated to a high-tech center in Lancaster, Texas and three other Dallas area locations. Nike said it would cut its reliance on China from U.S. market production to reduce the impact of President Trump's tariffs on imports. The company warned that President Trump's new tariffs could add about $1 billion in costs for fiscal 2026. Chief Financial Officer Matthew Friend said Nike aimed to lower China's share of U.S. shoe imports from 16% to a high single-digit percentage range by next May next year. Tesla executive Omer Af Afshar has reportedly left the company this week, marking another senior departure as the electric vehicle maker struggled with slumping demand in Europe and North America. Afshar, a long, il long-time Elon Musk confidant, has overseen sales and manufacturing across both regions and was closely tied to key projects like the Texas Giga factory. His exit followed a series of executive departures over the past 14 months, including leaders from Tesla's robots, batteries and public policy teams. Britain's competition regulator said it was reviewing Boeing deal to require Spirit Aero Systems to assess any potential impact on competition in the UK or other markets. The Competition and Markets Authority invited comments from interested parties by July 15th before deciding whether to launch a formal investigation. 
Hawaiian Airlines said that some of its systems were disrupted by a hack, but confirmed that flights were operating safely as scheduled. The airline owned by Alaska Air Group said it had taken steps to safeguard operations, while the U.S. aviation watchdog stated there was no impact on safety and it was monitoring the situation. SpaceX said that its debris recovery efforts after last week's Starship explosion had been hindered by unauthorized parties trespassing on private property in Mexico. The company said it had requested local and federal help from Mexican government and had offered resources and assistance for the cleanup. This came after President Claudia Scheinbaum said her administration was investigating the security and environmental impact and would start a legal process if international laws had been violated. Apple said it had changed App Store rules and fees in the European Union after antitrust regulators ordered the company to remove barriers preventing developers from sending customers outside the store for payments. The new rules introduced a 20% processing fee for in-app purchases and a minimum of 5% fee for developers who direct users to external payment methods. Moving to sports, we begin with football. Manchester City recorded an emphatic 5-2 win over Juventus in the Club World Cup. With a 2-1 scoreline at the break, Erling Haaland sprang from the bench and scored the 300th career goal. Then he played the provider for Phil Foden to make it 4-1. Sabino crashed home a stunning fifth goal to seal the match. Vinicius Jr. scored one goal and made another with a touch of class as Real Madrid beat Red Bull Salzburg 3-0 in the Club World Cup. Gonzalo Garcia wrapped up the win with a late goal. With this, Real sealed their place in the last 16 of the tournament. Cristiano Ronaldo signs a new two-year contract with Al Nasser to extend his stay in the Saudi Pro League to 2027. In a social media post, Ronaldo announced his new chapter with the team. The Portuguese icon joined Al Nasser in 2022, has scored 93 goals in 105 appearances for them in all competitions. New Brazil coach Carlo Ancelotti says Neymar is a very important player and has urged the injury-prone star to prepare well for the 2026 World Cup. Brazil's top scorer with 79 goals from missing from Ancelotti's first squad at the end of May. With Neymar absent, five-time world champions Brazil qualified for next year's World Cup with a 1-0 win over Paraguay this month. In cricket, West Indies contained Australia at 92 for four in their second innings at Stumps on day two of the first test in Barbados. Australia were trailing by just 10 runs after bowling out the Caribbean side at, at T419 runs. Australia are currently leading the 82 runs with six wickets in hand. In the world of motorsports, Charles Leclerc says his first experience driving a virtual vision of Ferrari's 2026 car is in the simulator was not the most enjoyable. This comes amid ongoing concerns about the impact of Formula One's new regulation on the quality of racing next year. In badminton, India's Tanvi Sharma entered women's singles quarterfinal at the US Open. The 16-year-old beat her world number 58 Thai opponent 21-18, 21-16. Tanvi, the junior world number 2 and 66 in the senior rankings, will face world number 50 from Malaysia in the quarters. In tennis, Taylor Fritz enjoyed two wins in one day in Eastbourne Open. The men's world number 5 beat Hao Fonseca and Marcos Girion to move closer to a fourth Eastbourne title. Fritz's second round clash with Brazil's Fonseca was suspended at one set, all due to bad light on June 25th. The game resumed on June 26th, in which Fritz won 6-3-6-7-7-5. The 27-year-old returned to court hours later to beat fellow American Gideon 7-5-4-6-7-5 to book his spot in semi-final. Five-time Grand Slam winner Iga Shontek is one match away from her first-ever grass court final. This after the women's world number eight beat Ekaterina Alexandrova 6-4-7-6 at Bad Homburg semi-finals. The former world number one will now face last year's Wimbledon final finalist Jasmine Paolini in the semis. And the world of tennis prepares for the Wimbledon Open, which starting this year will be played without line judges. For the first time in the tournament's storied 148-year history, the men and women stationed at the back of the courts calling out and fault will be missing. The Grand Slam announced in October that it was scrapping the line judges in the favour of electronic line calling. 
And finally, in entertainment news, Anna Wintour has stepped away from the role of American Vogue's editor-in-chief. She directed the magazine for the last 37 years. As per reports, the new editor-in-chief will report to Wintour as global editorial director of Vogue. Wintour will continue her role as chief content officer of Vogue's parent company, Condé Nast. In closing arguments in Sean Diddy Combs' high-profile federal trial, U.S. prosecutors alleged the hip-hop mogul ran a violent criminal enterprise that used fear and manipulation to traffic women, including his former girlfriends. The court also viewed hotel footage showing Combs assaulting one of the women and heard from employees who admitted to booking rooms and procuring drugs for the events. Combs faces charges for racketeering, conspiracy, sex trafficking and transportation for prostitution. The weekend made a triumphant return to Sophie Stadium near Los Angeles. This marks his first performance there since a 2022 vocal injury that forced him to cancel a show mid-performance. He came back with a vengeance man, he told fans during the first of four sold-out nights. Police in Los Angeles are investigating a break-in at a property reportedly owned by Brad Pitt in the upscale Los Feliz neighborhood. Three suspects allegedly entered through a front window, ransacked the home and fled with the stolen property. Pitt, who purchased the house in April 2023 for $5.5 million, was not at home at the time. And a live-action sequel at Lilo & Stitch has been greenlit. A teaser clip shows Stitch tearing through the Disney lot in a pink convertible, shouting, Get ready, here we go. Stitch continues to be a merchandising juggernaut with Disney ranking in $2.6 billion in branded product sales in 2024 alone. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. I am Gushin Galan and we'll see you right back here next week. Stay informed and stay tuned to First Post. A new nuclear threat is brewing in South Asia. And this time, even Washington can't look away. A new report has come out. It warns Pakistan is developing an ICBM. That's an intercontinental ballistic missile. Now, what is an ICBM? There are long-range missiles. These, they can fly distances that can exceed 5,500 kilometers. Usually, ICBMs are designed to deliver nuclear warheads, and only a small group of countries have these weapons. They are the United States, Russia, China, the United Kingdom, India, and France. North Korea also claims it has 